Muscles with mandibular attachment are the substantial masseter muscle, which can be up to four centimeters thick in the younger horse, but atrophied in the older horse. Together with temporalis, which are for mastication or chewing. The masseter muscle has its origins in the maxilla and it crosses the temporomandibular joint to the mandible. Another muscle with insertion in the mandible is sternomandibularis for lateral flexion of the entire neck from its origins in the sternum. The TMJ is a proportionately sizable joint with a relatively horizontal table-like surface, not obviously corresponding with the angled occlusal surface formed by the dentition, which induces a triangular figure of eight chewing pattern. You should be able to see clearly here the angles of the teeth and the corresponding angle on the mandible and how the action is like this. You can see the surface is substantial and must articulate with the angled occlusal surface formed by the dentition. So you have a triangular chewing pattern which articulates on an ellipsoid or rounded surface. And in this picture, you can see this is the joint line here. So almost in line with the eye here. And these are the surfaces of the teeth that are angled. This joint can extend, flex, rotate and circumduct. And when the head is lowered, the mandible moves into protraction. implications for tight nose bands because they can restrict the whole jaw if the nose bands are very tight and their head moves into flexion for ridden work. Optimal function is largely determined by optimal dental balance and very often that means that if there are restrictions through the TMJ and the teeth are floated or rasped competently, that will balance the TMJ joint. And because the occlusal surface of the cheek teeth is angled, sharp points can develop causing compensatory movement as the horse attempts to avoid contact with the soft tissue and resultant or existing laceration. So that will all affect how the horse moves through the TMJ. And here are four methods to evaluate symmetry of the TMJ. The first is to simply palpate the musculotendinous junction just below the joint line for any reaction. The second is to evaluate the symmetry of the temporal muscles. So in other words, one will be more developed than the other, although this is an extreme case. 
and that will indicate that the horse is chewing only on one side so avoiding chewing on potentially the painful side and incidentally bilateral Enlargement of these muscles can indicate some form of sustained stress or pain. And then compare the temporal muscle development. The third method, when the TMJ is physically restricted, this can be observed passively as reduced lateral flexion of the mandible as it glides across the maxilla via contact with the occlusal surface. And fourth, dynamically, the action of the coronoid processes can be seen to be asymmetrical when the horse is eating and a momentary bulge can appear on the restricted side. Example, when the horse is chewing these processes here can be prominent indicating that the mandible has moved upwards on one side because of a restriction on the masseter muscle so observing action at the coronoid processes Let's take a brief look at these tests in action. They tend to react about first is the palpation of the muscular tendinous junction. There. And so you just can see some reaction from that horse. There. And if I do the other side, right. other side, more oh. reaction. bit of a reaction but not as much as the other side. Hand under the jaw and the then lateral the maxilla and we just flex laterally. Oh how interesting. Laterally flexing. She's restricted the to the left. Mandible. Can you all see that? So her jaw moves further to the, her right. And here we have the coronoid processes at work. Anything. And this will be the restricted side. There's another one. Just give them a bit of food. And off they go. There. That's the restricted side. Finally, muscles with insertion in the mandibular region from the trunk are sternomandibularis to laterally flex the whole cervical region with its origins on the sternum, when acting together, they ventrally flex the neck. And omohyoid, which originates from the fascia of the scapular muscles, to insert in the hyoid apparatus of the throat region. And the hyoid apparatus is suspended in the soft tissue of the throat region from the base of the cranium so not directly via soft tissue and you'll actually see it sort of floating in this region here it's not directly connected with the skull It connects to the muscle tissue of the tongue, providing structure and support to the larynx, pharynx and tongue. It's not directly connected with the skull, but it connects to the muscle tissue of the tongue, the mandible, the temporal bone and the sternum. I've deliberately left this bullet point down here just in case you forget <laughs> that bitting issues may be connected with this arrangement 
Because of these connections, some extensive muscle releases may be possible via this soft tissue manipulation of the hyoid connections. But it's highly fragile and hence vulnerable as a structure and can readily fracture if the horse retracts the tongue, should manipulation of it be attempted poorly by a therapist. The tongue may be permanently protracted as it is not possible to stabilise this structure for repair. Let's have a quick look at how the hyoid region is palpated for asymmetry of muscle tone. And this is done by placing the fingers against the medial mandible in here and just gently pushing upwards here. I'm just palpating the tongue, nothing yet. And just see what reaction we get. This is not it's really the best of the tongue. It's not reacting to that. Oops, slight on there. And gently up. Mm, slight reaction. Then and go to the, other, on the side. other side. Yeah, and there's so the reaction. reaction To finish, let's look at how acutely reactive this entire head and neck muscle group can be when those muscles develop extensive hypertonicity or tightness or reactivity. So this is brachiocephalicus on the right side of the horse. And the horse right. almost can't okay. bear to have them touched. Good girl, you're all right. And on the other side, oh. it appears oh. more pronounced. Yeah, sit all the way down for lunch. With fasciculation and instability of the lower limb. In the next session, we will explore the remaining neck muscles and those of the scapular region.